Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about um, uh, using some of the uh, uh, animation, uh, the retargeted clips that we'd uh, processed over here. Remember, we retargeted them onto uh, MoCap Biped 3. Um, and we're going to use that to uh, basically set up some animation for our crowd agents. Um, this is uh, the network right here. Uh, and the setup is in here. It's been slightly modified by me to kind of uh, accommodate this. Well, what I should say is uh, this network um, is something I got from a help card example, and then I modified it slightly, uh, which is basically what this is about, and made it a few tiny adjustments to um, the actual uh, simulation itself. But uh, the reason why I wanted to mentioned that I got this from the health card specifically is if you've uh, set up crowd work before, uh, particularly if you've looked at, I did a intro to crowds video um, uh, on uh, side effects website. Um, and I did that, I think in Houdini 18.5. Uh, anyways, an older version of Houdini. And um, it was before, Kin effects existed. Uh, actually, it would have been before 18.5. Um, it was before kin effects existed. So the way that you imported agents into um, uh, your crowd sim was, you know, you either got it from a rigid object level, you imported an FBX, or you imported an, uh, a USD file and, and work with that. Um, with the advent of kin effects, you don't need to do that anymore. You can use a, um, uh, you know, bring in your rig, uh, grab some uh, animation from, uh, you know, in this case, uh, I'm look, I've, you know, pointing to here, but uh, you could get this from anywhere, like it's, and bring it in as kind of kin effects data, right? And then uh, extract your locomotion and uh, feed it into your network and you're good to go. Um, so if you're interested in using kin effects rather than using FBX or, uh, you know, object level rigs or USD to kind of drive your crowd sim, uh, and there are advantages to, to doing that, um, what you want to look at is basically uh, the help card from uh, and I'll, I'll show you how to get to that right now. So if you drop down a um, agent from rig SOP and you come over here, at the bottom here, there's an example uh, agents from SOPs. And if you load that, you basically get a kind of uh, default setup that shows you how to use kin effects to um, add clips and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention that as a pre preface and just let you know that that's where um, uh, this kind of the original setup comes from that I, I've modified slightly for this example. So um, let's talk a little bit about this example and uh, what I'm doing here. So uh, I am uh, over here. I have my uh, file where I'm bringing in the retargeted clip. Uh, so this is retargeted to the mocap biped 3 uh, skeleton. Um, I'm renaming the clip. Uh, so under clip info, uh, originally it's, if we take a look at this, uh, bu -bu -bu, we go to, um, So I basically changed the name here to jump uh, from its original name, which was uh, 01 underscore 01. So slightly more descriptive. And uh, I've trimmed the clip a little bit. So this, the original clip here, if we, um, uh, let me just bypass this. You can take a look at it. So it's just this guy jumping, and then he reaches the end and turns around. Uh, I don't want all of that. I just want the kind of initial jumping motion. So I am trimming the clip so that I only have uh, that kind of first sequence of jumps. 
Groovy. Uh, and then I have this note here for compute foot planting, um, which you know you can use for foot planting. Uh, part of the reason why I have this is um, if we you know take a look at this kind of side view, uh, the agent you know the is not it is you know walking off of the ground. So if I don't have this uh, foot planting um, turned on when I transition from you know my initial clip, which is a walking clip, to this jumping clip, the character is going to be off the ground. Um, so if I don't have foot planting on, so let me just kind of turn that or display this. Uh, show this at work. Okay, so we have our agents and they're initially walking. And then they're going to transition to jumping. Now, you'll notice we can just kind of go backwards a little bit here and watch what happens with the feet. So it's, you know, here they're walking and they're nice and, you know, on the ground. And then if I don't have that kind of foot locking stuff in place, they kind of hover above the ground, which is unpleasant uh, and undesirable. And, um, you know, it's if I wanted to, and I could have probably come up with uh, some sort of methodology in the retargeting workflow that just kind of lowered the agent, uh, and I could probably have figured out a procedural way of doing that. Um, but uh, if I set up foot locking and get that to work, it no longer becomes an issue, and um, I can uh, do. Let me. Where is it? Uh, I believe I have to recook. Yeah, I got to reload this to have it take effect. Um, and if I come back down here and we reevaluate again, so a bit of an awkward transition, but I didn't want to waste my time working on that. You can see that the the feet are no longer. Uh, floating on the ground, but they're constrained properly to the floor. So uh, advantages to using, uh, taking care of foot locking and making use of that. So uh, motion clip evaluates. Yeah, and then I'm computing the foot locking. And you can play with the, uh, you know, uh, max position change values and the blend in blend out. I'm just using uh, defaults um, and I'm setting up the joint groups, right? That I want to uh, um, uh, be affected. And uh, then this gets fed into an extract locomotion clip. And yeah, and then I can feed it into this operator here for uh, motion clip. And, I'm putting multiple clips, uh, or I'm loading multiple clips into here, uh, so I can make take advantage of those. So I have a run. There's the default walk. All these guys get together. Um, the clips get added, and we're in good shape. Um, yeah, and uh, so we can come back down here again and just run it through one more time. And so, uh, yeah, this is really rough, and I didn't, uh, you know, spend a lot of time finessing this or anything like that. But uh, I wanted to, you know, if I was going to show the retargeting workflow, I thought it made sense to also show um, how you can take these retargeted clips, uh, use them uh, in your crowd system, and also just illustrate that there's a new um, way of of using. Um, uh, clips or kin effects uh, to set up your motion clips for your crowd agents. And uh, that uh, concludes uh, this tutorial and uh, concludes uh, this series of videos in general. Um, I hope uh, you found it uh, useful. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks very much.